Once you have unboxed your Peplink Balance 20X, attach the antennas and connect any internet service, whether that be wired, a cellular SIM card, or a USB cellular modem. Check out our video on how to insert the SIM card if needed. Plug the router into power with the included power supply next. Wait approximately two to three minutes for the router to boot up. You can monitor this by checking the status and Wi-Fi LEDs on the front of the router. Once they turn green, you should be able to connect. At this time, you can either connect your computer via Wi-Fi or connect with an Ethernet cable via one of the local area network ports one through four. If connecting to the Wi-Fi, find the default name of Peplink with the last four characters of the serial number after it. The default password will be listed on the bottom as AP password. Now that we're connected to the network, we'll open a web browser to access its administration page for configuration. In the address bar, we'll enter the default IP address of 192.168.1.1. Since the router is redirecting to HTTPS, it gives us this alert that our connection is not private. This is normal as the admin page is not accessible on the internet, and therefore there is no security certificate to verify. To proceed, we'll click Advance, then use this link below. Log in with the default username and password, which are both admin, all lowercase letters. With the default firmware, you will be prompted to change the password immediately. Enter the current password of admin, then enter a new unique password. Note that this must be at least 10 characters long, upper and lowercase letters, as well as numbers. Click Save and Apply to continue. You should then see a confirmation that the password has changed. Click OK. After another moment, the dashboard page of the web admin will load. This is where you can see the status of your connections, details about the LAN and Wi-Fi, as well as details about the router. Wait for a moment and we should see the wired internet connection or WAND. Establish a connection and turn green by the status. The cellular connection may take a little longer to establish as it partly depends on how strong your signal is. In our case, we have a custom access point name that is likely not being obtained automatically. This will prevent the cellular from ever connecting, so we'll head over to the network tab to adjust that. Click on cellular from here to access its settings. In the window that opens, scroll down to the cellular settings section and find the operator settings field. We'll change this from auto to custom and enter in our custom AP and in the field below. If you need to apply a custom setting here, but you're not sure what your APN is, check out our other video for more information. Click Save and Apply at the bottom of the window when you're done. Now that the APN is applied, we'll go back to the dashboard and see if it will establish a connection. There we go. It says Standby because we're using it as a backup connection and a priority to connection. This means is ready to be used when the primary WAN fails. If you'd like to change the Wi-Fi settings, go to the AP tab. Click on the default or SSID name from here and this window will open. Change the name here first. Then scroll down to security settings and change the password. You can uncheck the hide characters button to see what's entered. Keep in mind that your new password should be between eight and 63 characters. Click the save button at the bottom of the page then apply changes at the top right. Note that if you are currently connected to the default Wi-Fi, you will be disconnected. Wait about a minute for the changes to update and then reconnect using your new Wi-Fi name and password. Next, we'll run a firmware check and make sure that's up to date. Click on system then firmware on the left. As long as your router has an internet connection, you can click the check for firmware button and wait for the system to report back. Just like that, it has found the new version. We can now click the download and upgrade button to continue. You'll be advised to download a copy of the configuration. While upgrading firmware should not erase your settings, it's always a good idea in case something goes wrong. Simply click the download link here and wait for the .conf file to download and save. Click OK when the configuration is saved. You should then see upgrade status as shown here, followed by a progress bar showing the percentage of the upgrade that has completed. We'll wait for this to reach 90% and then the router will reboot. The LEDs will go dark and the status LED will turn red. The firmware and reboot will be complete once you see that the status and Wi-Fi LEDs have turned green again. At that time, if you are connecting via Wi-Fi, you may need to reconnect again. Otherwise, you will be taken back to the logging screen. However, as we are here, you may again need to bypass the security alert. Enter your login credentials when possible. Back at the dashboard, we can confirm the new firmware has applied properly and wait for our WAN connections to reestablish.
After that, we can address the in-control alert at the bottom of the page. You can either choose to manage your device on in-control, or you can disable the management. We recommend adding it to in-control so that support can easily assist you as needed. Follow the link that best suits your needs. We'll go ahead and show you how to add to your in-control account. For more information on how to create an account, including adding your first device, check out our other video. We'll log into our in-control account, select an organization, and then select the group we want to add the device to. Once at the group level page, find the top right of the device list table and click the Add Devices button. A new page will appear where you're prompted to enter the serial number or numbers of the devices. We can go back to the Peplink web admin to find that under the Status tab and Device page. With the number entered, we can now click Next. A summary of the serial number, device name, and address for the group will appear on the following page. Adjust the name if desired, then click Confirm. You should see that the device was added successfully. Click Group Overview to access it from here. Now, if we go back to the dashboard page of the router, we can confirm the alert is no longer displayed. That's it for your first time setting up the Balance 20X. We hope you found this video helpful and welcome you to subscribe to see more.